China is one of the largest countries in the world, with some of the most diverse terrain and natural landscapes. From vast arid deserts to awe-inspiring mountain ranges. And from majestic rivers to tranquil forests. I traveled to China independently for more than a decade, on several occasions. And in this video, I will show you some of the country's most beautiful and captivating natural scenery I came across. From the surreal rock formations of Zhang Jiajie and Huangshan National Parks, to the blue turquoise waters of Zhou Zaiko. From the frozen lakes and mountain peaks of Tibet to the mysterious earth and stone forest in Yunnan province. From the powerful Hukou waterfall to the picturesque mountains and hills around Yangshuo. From the mighty Yangtze River traversing China to the empty deserts of Gansu. So join me on this journey exploring China's landscapes. We begin our travels in Zhang Jiajie National Park, perhaps one of the country's most beautiful and recognizable scenic regions. Located in central China, the park is dotted with surreal, pillar-like rock formations, peaks, canyons and ravines. It was painted by many a Chinese artist, and more recently inspired the directors of Avatar to create their fantasy world of Pandora's floating mountains. The result of years of physical erosion, Zhang Jiajie's landscape is also home to a number of rare species of flora and fauna. Do not, however, expect to have the place to yourself. Zhang Jiajie is part of a larger national park called Wu Lin Yuan Scenic Area and has become immensely popular in recent years. <laughs> <laughs> Getting around the park is straightforward, with a dense network of walkways, stairs, buses and cable cars. There are also glass elevators, electric monorails and escalators cutting right through the mountains. Yet probably the most eye-catching man-made attraction here is the Zhang Jiajie glass bridge. Crossing this bridge can be an exhilarating experience as you stare down the 300 meters deep canyon underneath. But for some, it can be terrifying. We travel onwards to Sichuan province to visit Zhou Zaigo, nature reserve. Named after nine Tibetan villages in the area, Zhou Zaigo was highly inaccessible until only a few decades ago. Since then, it has become one of China's most frequently visited national parks, and for good reason.
with a subtropical monsoon climate, Jozaigo offers an incredible landscape. With green forests, steep mountains and powerful waterfalls, But it's probably best known for the dozens of blue turquoise lakes, which originated from glacial activity, and vary considerably in size, depth and surroundings. From the lush green landscapes of Jodzai Go, we travel deep into the remote Taklamakan Desert to visit Dun Huang, an important stopover on the ancient Silk Road. This town is surrounded by massive sand dunes that can rise to 1,700 meters. While much of the dunes remain relatively unexplored, some parts have turned into popular tourist centers. Here people take part in all kinds of outdoor activities and perhaps unsurprisingly can briefly walk in the footsteps of explorers and traders that traversed this region for centuries. Thank you very much, thank you. We continue our journey in Yangshuo, a small town situated in an otherworldly panorama of limestone hills and mountains, formed by erosion and weathering during the last 40 million years. It's a tranquil place to visit and travelers often stay longer than planned, captivated by the natural beauty and relaxed atmosphere. A great way to get around here is by bicycle, pedaling through charming villages and green rice fields, or board one of the small cruise boats or traditional rafts for a completely different view from the water.
with almost 600 million people still living in the countryside. The area around Yangshuo also gives a good insight into rural life in China. mighty Yangtze River, the third longest in the world, originates on the Tibetan Plateau and meanders to its mouth just north of Shanghai, 6.3 thousand kilometers downstream. Along the way it meets breathtaking mountain scenery, hundreds of tributaries and some of China's largest urban centers. As you travel through the country, chances are you will cross this river several times. From the spectacular first bend, where the Yangtze makes a 90 degree turn in less than one kilometer, to the famous Three Gorges, where cruise ships continue to sail tourists, past towering cliffs. Apart from its natural beauty, the Yangtze has played a crucial role in China's development throughout the centuries. Today, almost a third of the population lives in the area covered by its basin, including cities like Chongqing and Wuhan. With such growth, however, also come huge challenges. The Yangtze River is home to a large variety of animals and plants, many of which feel the pressures from human activity. Industrial pollution, water diversion and the building of massive dams, including the controversial Three Gorges Dam, are just some of the threats the river is facing. Next destination is the incredible Tiger Leaping Gorge. Located in Yunnan province, this scenic canyon is part of the Jinsha River, a primary tributary of the Yangtze. With a maximum depth of almost 3.8 thousand meters from river to mountain peak, it's one of the deepest and most spectacular gorges in the world.
we travel further south to visit the mesmerizing Yuanyang rice terraces. For more than a thousand years, the local Hani people have been developing an intricate system of rice terraces here, making use of the unique climate in the region. By doing so, they have not only provided food for the region and beyond, but also created a stunning, rural, albeit man-made landscape. Travelers can stay in one of the many villages in the area and experience some of the farm life up close. A visit to a local food market should not be missed. These are colorful and lively events with many people wearing traditional dress and give an interesting glimpse into local customs. Also in Yunnan province is Xilin, a peculiar collection of grey limestone pillars, split and eroded by wind and rain over the years. Translating as stone forest, it's not hard to imagine the tall rocks of Xilin to be trees made from stone. It's a popular day trip from Kunming for tour groups. And some parts of the park are particularly crowded. That said, it's all part of the experience and can be a fun insight into China's growing tourism sector. Crave a bit of serenity, it's easy to find narrow and secluded pockets all for yourself. For our next destination, we travel to the far west of China to visit the beautiful. Karaku Lake. Close to the border with Tajikistan and with a mostly Kyrgyz population, the region feels more like Central Asia than China. Sitting at almost 3,700 meters, Karakul is still dominated by two mountains that reach nearly 8 kilometers high. 
Moestag Atta en Mount Kongoor. visited Karakul, now more than a decade ago, it was possible to stay with local families inside a yurt. These portable round tents are traditionally used as temporary homes by nomadic groups in the steppes and mountains of Central Asia. Remaining at high elevation, we continue our journey in Tibet, a sparsely populated spiritual region that captures the imagination of many travelers. Also known as the rooftop of the world, this is an area filled with captivating mountains, rivers, lakes and glaciers. It shares a special border with Nepal, right on the very summit of the highest mountain on earth, Mount Everest. Although Chinese influence has increased in recent years, this is still very much the heartland of the Tibetan people. As you make your way across the vast plateau, you will see monks and pilgrims, monasteries and prayer flags, and genuinely feel in a different world. Please note, however, that foreign travelers can only visit Tibet as part of a group tour. We travel onwards to the Khuko waterfall at the intersection of two provinces in the north of China. It's part of the imposing Yellow River along which ancient Chinese civilization developed and prospered. After flowing gently through the valley here, the Yellow River suddenly faces a narrow stretch of riverbed, forming the impressive Huko Waterfall.
return to the south of China to visit the Jade Dragon or Yulong Mountain. This mountain range is made up of 13 different peaks and contains beautiful meadows, canyons and glaciers. Its star attraction is the viewing platform at almost 5000 meters, which can be reached by riding two cable cars. From here you can admire the rugged mountain landscape and on some days rise above the clouds. Yulong is a popular day trip from one of China's most visited historic towns, Lijiang. And it's wise to arrive early, to avoid waiting lines. And please note that the rapid ascent to the viewing platform and the change of altitude can be difficult to deal with for some travelers. <laughs> Not far from here is the earth forest of Yuan Mo, a small but intriguing area known for its tall stone pillars. Many of the rock formations have a yellow or brown color and stand in sharp contrast with the green hills and mountains around them. Our next stop lies in the remote Gansu province. Dangye Danxia is a curious geological park filled with colorful rock formations. Its lunar-like landscape of mountains, pillars and ravines varies so much in color that the park is often called the Rainbow Mountains of China. It was formed over the course of millions of years, the result of constantly changing sedimentation and erosion. finish our travels in Huangshan, or Yellow Mountain, one of China's most iconic national parks. Its scenery of peculiar granite peaks and twisted pines is often covered in fog and clouds, adding to the mysterious atmosphere that used to attract painters and poets. Today, Huangshan is visited by millions of tourists every year, all wanting to catch a glimpse of this characteristic mountain landscape.
And that concludes our journey through some of China's most beautiful national parks and scenic regions. We hope this video gave you some travel ideas, or at least provided a glimpse into the diversity of landscapes found in this massive country. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you again next time. Travel safely.